Hi, everybody. My name is Bree Daniel, and I'm an attorney who's been practicing in the area of domestic relations for almost 25 years. Now, spousal support or alimony is often somebody comes into the office and they want to know, am I going to get alimony? Am I entitled to it? Or they say, will I have to pay alimony? Well, I'm going to talk to you about the seven factors of alimony, and hopefully that'll give you some clarity. The first factor is the length of the marriage. So if you've been married for just a short period of time, even though that the other party may make a lot more money than you, you shouldn't assume that you're going to get alimony. And many times people come in to see me and say, I want to get alimony because um, they make a lot more money than me. Well, if you've been married for a short period of time, you're probably not going to get alimony. I can't 100% tell you that because it's in the discretion of the court and there are no formulas with alimony like there are with child support. But the length of the marriage is important. Secondly, um, the education level. If your spouse has um, advanced degrees or um, a lot of certifications or trainings and you maybe don't have a high school education or, or don't have those advanced degrees, then the court's going to look it back. It's basically, it's, it's about how can you support yourself because it's, it's, that, it's to bridge that gap between you being able to support yourself and your spouse being able to support you after a, a, after a long-term marriage generally or at least a period of time. Because alimony can be rehabilitated. It can be just to get you to a place where perhaps you can get a better job or you can get a job at all if you haven't been working for a while. Another factor in alimony is fault. So the court's going to look at who's at fault in the dissolution of the marriage. If you have been um, cheating on your spouse and you're in a relationship and let's say you're living with the other party, you're not going to get alimony. Cohabitation would end alimony anyway. And so if you begin living with somebody before your divorce is final, then you're not going to get alimony. Or you're in a serious relationship with somebody before the divorce is final, it's a possibility you're not going to get alimony. That's going to impact the it's, it's not that it's, it's not the only factor, but it's a determining factor. On the other hand, if you're the party who's at fault, perhaps you've um, committed adultery or perhaps it's something else, then that's going to factor in as well. Is the court going to award alimony um, based on your fault or going to award more alimony based on your fault? It's more going to come into how much and how long the alimony is that you get when you look at fault than some of the other things. Another piece is the earning ability. Kind of like when I talked about the education, if your earning ability is great, even if you haven't been working, then the court is less likely to give you alimony or give you alimony for a shorter period of time. For instance, maybe you haven't been working in the last couple of years, but your ability to earn, you, you've had jobs before where you made uh, enough money to support yourself. Well, the court's going to take a look at what your earning ability is. Or if you've never worked and it's going to be really difficult for you to support yourself, the court is not likely to just leave you absolutely destitute, especially in a long, after a long-term marriage. Some other issues are um, the health of the parties. So if you're in poor health and you can't work because of the poor health, then the court is more likely to award you alimony. Or on the corollary, if you're in poor health and aren't able to work, or it looks like you can't work any longer, then the court would not award alimony. I had a client who had to pay some alimony, but once he had a few, he had some um, several heart attacks, and the court eliminated his alimony because he no longer had the ability to work. And then I had another case where the party became very ill and couldn't pay alimony, and it was at that point, it was reduced a great deal, commensurate with the, the, the amount of time the person worked. I recently had a case that the client had a series of strokes and had lost his job, but his wife was still asking for our money. And of course, if you don't have a job, even if the person had made money in the past, there can't be awarded our money, which it becomes a kind of sticky situation if you've been counting on that money and then suddenly the money's not there. But the court only can deal with what's in front of them. They can't extrapolate and say that person may make a lot of money in the future. So our money is going to be based on present earnings. Um, if, if somebody makes a certain amount now, even though, you know, for instance, if somebody has gone to law school and medical school, 
school and you've been with them and you say, well, they're going to make a lot of money one day. You can't get our money based on what they may make in the future. The court's going to look at what they're making now, not the fact that they may be making more money after the marriage is over. Other considerations are the age. If you're older and you are not able to get a job anymore or the likelihood of you getting a good job any, uh, at this point is lessened, then you're more likely to get out of money. On the other hand, if you're um, perfectly able to get your own job and support yourself, then the court is less likely to give you out of money. The other factors are, I'm looking at my notes to make sure I didn't forget anything. Um, see, health, age, length of marriage, education, earning ability, uh, standard of living. So earning ability, standard of living, and education all kind of go together. If, once you're divorced, your standard of living would suffer dramatically, the court's going to take that into consideration. On the other hand, if you make the kind of money that you can pay to live in pretty much the same manner that you were living in, the court's probably not going to give you alimony or not as much alimony. So those are the factors. Now, a couple of other things that you need to look out for when it comes to alimony are the type of alimony. Is it going to be permanent alimony? And if it is, that's more of a property supplement. And that means that it's not modifiable, and that also means that it is taxable to the person that is paying it, which means they don't get any deduction for it. If it is periodic alimony, either rehabilitated or permanent periodic alimony, then it's taxable to the person who's receiving it. And it also would end on death, remarriage, or cohabitation. So those are just some factors to think about when you're looking at alimony. Hope that helps some of your questions. Hope that, I'm sorry, hope that helps answer some of your questions. And we hope that if you have any more alimony questions, that you will make an appointment and come in to see us. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you.